Hello students, you and I in this beautiful world love to watch TV. And every home has a battle to control the remote control. With the IPL set to begin on September 19 in the UAE, there's going to be a battle whether to watch serial or the IPL matches. Other than sports, I love to watch movies. And one of my favorite movies is out here on the screen. You can tell me about your favorite movie by typing it in the comment box below. And do not forget to click on like and subscribe if you haven't done so. This Hollywood movie, White House Town, shows the protagonist in action to save his own daughter and the US president as there is a sudden attack on the White House. I picked this particular movie because India too has seen an attack on the parliament building in 2001. On the morning of December 13, 2001, five terrorists entered parliament house complex around 11.40 am in an ambassador car fitted with a red light and a forged communist sticker on the car's windshield. As the car moved towards building gate number 12, one of the members of the parliament house watch and ward staff became suspicious. When the car was forced to turn back, it hit then Vice President Krishan Khan's vehicle, after which the terrorists got down and opened fire. By this time, an alarm was raised and all the building gates were closed. In the ensuing firing that lasted for over 30 minutes, all five terrorists were killed, along with eight security personnel and a gardener. At least 15 people were injured. The hundred or so ministers and MPs in Parliament at the time remained unhurt. Our parliament was attacked. But what is the parliament? Let us learn about it in our political science chapter, Union Legislature. The parliament is an institution that frames all the rules or legislations for the country. Therefore, it is known as the legislature or the parliament. There are two models of legislative structure the presidential model as in the US and the parliamentary model as in the UK. In US, the president is elected by the citizens, whereas in UK as well as in India, the prime minister is selected by the majority party in parliament. Clear separations between the legislative and the executive branches in the presidential model whereas the parliamentary model has lesser separation of powers as executive members are also the legislative branch members. The three main components of the Parliament of India are the President of India, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. The President of India is an integral part of the Indian Parliament. Let us take a look at some of the legislative powers of the President. The President can summon, prorogue or dissolve the Lok Sabha. Hence, he can ask the lower house to convene a meeting. That's what we call summon. Prorogue means to discontinue a session without dissolving the Lok Sabha and to dissolve is to suspend or dismiss the Lok Sabha which calls for fresh elections. The President can address the first session of Parliament after a general election and can address the first session of each year. Prior permission of the President is required to introduce certain types of bills that involve expenditure from the Consolidated Fund of India or regarding creation of a new state. The President gives his assent to the bill. By assent, we mean signature. Without his assent, no bill can become a law. The President can nominate members to the Houses of Parliament. He can nominate 12 members to the Rajya Sabha. India's star boxer Mary Com and recently distinguished jurist Justice Ranjan Gogoi have been nominated to the Rajya Sabha. He can also nominate two members from Anglo-Indian community to the Lok Sabha. The President has the power to issue ordinances when the Parliament is not in session. The Rajya Sabha is a permanent House of Parliament. Reason? It cannot be dissolved. 
Currently, there are 245 members in the Rajya Sabha, including the 12 nominated ones. That makes 233 elected members of the Rajya Sabha. Who elects them? Elected members of state, legislature, assemblies. The qualifications required to be a member of the Rajya Sabha are a person should be a citizen of India, should be 30 years of age and must possess qualifications as prescribed by the parliament. However, he can be disqualified if he holds office of profit or is of unsound mind or has acquired foreign citizenship. Regarding the tenure, Rajya Sabha members enjoy a six-year term. However, only one-third members retire every two years. So, a MP elected in 2014 completes his term in 2020, while two-thirds remain as members providing continuity, and therefore it is known as the Permanent House of Parliament. Who presides over the Rajya Sabha? Well, the Vice President of India is the ex-officio chairman of the Rajya Sabha. This is how you can differentiate between the two houses if you see a parliamentary session on TV. The Lok Sabha has a green carpet and the Rajya Sabha has a red carpet. Unlike the Rajya Sabha, the Lok Sabha is not a permanent body. It is elected by the people directly on the basis of universal adult franchise. During the election to the Lok Sabha, 530 members are directly elected from the states and 13 members are directly elected from the Union Territories. Of the 530 seats in the Lok Sabha, 84 are reserved for persons belonging to the scheduled castes and 47 are reserved for scheduled tribes. Election constituencies are demarcated as per the density of the population. Hence, Uttar Pradesh sends 80 MPs to the Lok Sabha, whereas Mizoram, Nagaland, Sikkim send 1 MP each. India's smaller state, Goa, sends two MPs to the Lok Sabha, one from North Goa and the other from South Goa. To contest elections to the Lok Sabha, the qualifications remain the same as the Rajya Sabha, with only one difference, that is, a person has to complete 25 years of age. The term or the tenure of the Lok Sabha is five years, but can be dissolved earlier. The presiding officer of the Lok Sabha is the Speaker assisted by the Deputy Speaker. Let us now look at the powers and functions of the Speaker. The basic function of the Speaker is to preside over the House and conduct the meetings in an orderly manner. No member can speak in the House without his permission. The bills, reports, motions and resolutions are introduced with the Speaker's permission. He certifies whether a bill is a money bill or not. His decisions in all parliamentary matters are final. He can accept resignation of members or disqualify members in case of defection. The Indian constitution provides a division of powers in the federal structure between the union and state government in the seventh schedule. Thus, there are three lists, namely the union list, the state list and the concurrent list. There are 97 subjects in the union list on which Parliament has exclusive powers to legislate. They include defence, citizenship and foreign affairs. There are 61 subjects in the state list such as police and fisheries and there are 47 in the concurrent list such as education and marriage and divorce. Besides this, there are residuary subjects belonging to the union such as computer software and e-commerce. Legislative Procedure the primary function of the legislature is to make laws or to replace laws. These are introduced in the parliament as bills and when the bill is passed by the parliament it becomes an act. No procedure can take place in either house without the required quorum. To constitute a sitting of the house, one tenth of the total members of the house must be present. This is known as quorum. Lawmaking is a lengthy process and very complex. Basically, there are four stages. The first stage of legislation is the introduction of a bill, also known as the first reading of the bill, which is a proposed law with the statement of objects and reasons. There are two types of bills, ordinary bill and money bill. 
A money bill can be introduced only in the Lok Sabha and requires certification from the Speaker. If the House is in favour of the introduction of the bill, it goes to the next stage. At the second stage, there are four alternative courses. It may be taken into consideration by the House. It may be referred to the Select Committee of the House. It may be referred to a Joint Committee of both the Houses. And it may be circulated to collect or solicit public opinion. The day one of these motions is carried out, the provisions of the bill may be discussed. If taken into consideration, amendments and clause-by-clause clause consideration is undertaken. If referred to a select committee, it submits its report to the House and after that, amendments are admissible. Therefore, the second stage is the most time-consuming stage and once the clause-by-clause clause consideration is over and every clause is voted, the second reading of the bill comes to an end. In the third stage, the pros progress of the bill is normally quick. The member in charge moves that the bill be passed. After brief discussions, if the bill is passed, it is then transmitted to the other house for its consideration. The other house may pass the bill as it is, may reject the bill altogether or may not take any action which means rejection. The fourth and final stage is assent of the president. After a bill is finally passed by both the Houses of Parliament, it is presented with the signature of the Speaker to the President for his assent. And then it becomes an Act. Parliamentary Devices One of the important functions of the Parliament is to control the Executive. For this purpose, there are mechanisms in place which we call Parliamentary Devices. Question hour. Every sitting of the house begins with the question hour during which any parliamentarian may ask questions to point out the shortcomings of the administration. The time immediately following the question hour is termed as zero hour as it starts at around 12 noon. Matters of immediate importance about which written questions could not be asked are raised during the zero hour. In the third mechanism, matters of urgent public importance are raised through a calling attention notice. Discussion under Rule 193 allows a member to raise an important issue through discussion and the concerned minister gives a brief reply. The adjournment motion, if admitted, allows setting aside of the normal business of the House for discussing the matter mentioned in the motion. The purpose of the adjournment motion is to take the government to task for a recent act of omission or commission having serious consequences. The government moves the motion of confidence to prove majority, whereas the opposition parties move the motion of no confidence to defeat the government on the floor of the House. Besides these devices, the Parliament exercises control over the executive through various House committees called Parliamentary Committees. That brings to a close our chapter on the Union Legislature. Thank you very much.